Welcome to She's a Full-On Monet, a digital lifestyle magazine for women. Every week, our editor-in-chief, Kelly Castillo, along with Megan Block and special guests, participate in a deep-dive discussion about recent articles and topics we have covered. We invite you to become part of our community where everyone's welcome. You can totally sit with us. Hello, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us again. I believe we are on episode 23, Mm -hmm. if I am right. Yeah. Episode 23 of She's a Full-On Monet. I'm your host, Kelly, and I have with me here, Megan. Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) And um, we are going to talk today about something that I think is a really important subject, not just for ourselves, but also as I was just talking off camera with Megan about um, as an example, we're setting for the children that we are raising or are in their lives. And I think this is a particular issue for girls and women um, more than men, but that's just been what I've observed in my life. So today we are talking about uh, the over-apologizing that a lot of people do. This, the I'm sorry all the time and why you might be doing that and things that you can do to maybe uh, make a change and and what you should say instead. So I think this is a good topic. This has been something that I've seen a few people do like TikToks about this, about how um, they find themselves, once once somebody points it out to them, they find themselves uh, realizing how often they say, I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. when it's not necessary or Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a really good topic. I think a lot of people will probably really relate to this. Mm-hmm. So no, I, agree. I might, like I, like I was telling you off camera, my daughter says it a lot and I, I don't notice that I say a lot, but uh, she had to have picked it up from somewhere and her father doesn't say it really just out of like, well, I'm sorry, you know, like, so anyway, I, I'm interested because maybe we're more aware when others do it than when we're doing it ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then when, when it's been pointed out to you, what do you do then? You know, cause it's almost like, okay and then you almost want to be like well I'm sorry you know no you know <laughs> no, don't so, say it again yeah don't say it again um but it's it's a good thing to point out because and a lot of people do it and it's a good subject to talk about so I'm excited to to hear some tips and to talk about it more because I feel like I need to practice this so that I get it out of my my nine-year-old a little bit yeah well, I think first we should touch on the fact that um, I believe wholeheartedly in the importance of apologizing. Mm-hmm. If you mess up, if you hurt someone, if you do something that impacts another person in a negative way, I think you do owe them an apology. And um, to me, I, I'm really easy to let things go and I really move on from things really fast. I'm not a grudge holder, but I do need the person who injured me, quote unquote, to say, look, I'm sorry, um, either it wasn't intentional or this is why it happened or whatever. And to have that conversation before I can let it go. Um, yeah. So I, I want to say, we're not talking about like no apologizing because I think it's really important. Um, it's a great life lesson for everyone that when you, um, mess up or when you have regret for something that you did, that you apologize. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that when it, but it's good to know when, um, I'm sorry. I got really distracted because my, my daughter's school was calling my phone and it's not oh, time for them to get out. You want to take a break and call them back? I take a quick break. Cause yeah. I don't know what's going on. Just give me one second. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. So I think we can all agree that, um, apologizing is an important, uh, thing to do. And I know that it seems like, I don't mean to, you know, stereotype, but it seems to, in my lifetime, the uh, folks who have had a hard time apologizing, uh, like with their heart (laughs) in a meaningful way tend to be male. That's a stereotype. And I'm so sorry. I'm just talking from my own personal life experience. You don't mean every male, but I agree with you. And if you're going to talk to people about it, more people than not are probably going to agree with you, but that certainly doesn't mean that every man out there has a problem apologizing genuinely. Right. I, I, in my, in your my life experience, too, that's also um, the case. It's, and I'm almost like accepted it, you know, like I know that if, for example, my husband and I were to get into a fight and we're getting better at it, 
I know that I will be the one to ap- apologize for what I did wrong. Like I have no problem when I know I, I screwed up, like we spoke on genuinely apologizing, because I think that no matter what that other person may or may not have done, I'm in, I'm in control of my own words, actions, et cetera. And if I did something that may have affected someone and hurt someone, then I need to make, I need to make that right. You know? Yeah. I've always been like that. Um, When, um, when I feel like I've messed up and, or I knew I I wasn't proud of how I reacted to something, even if the other person was in the wrong of the event or whatever, um, if I'm not proud of how I reacted, or if I said something I didn't truly mean, or, um, if even if someone tells me I unintentionally hurt their feelings, whatever it is, I, my apologies come in a way where I say, look, I'm, I'm very sorry that I did this, whatever the action is or said this or whatever. And I'm going to take these following steps to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Cause I want you to know, like, I'm really yeah. serious. Cause here's the thing. An apology is not some, you know, magic, um, spell that you put on someone to make them forget. Like it's supposed to mean I'm, I'm hurt. I'm sorry. I hurt you. And I won't do this again. Like, right. Who likes apologizing, hearing someone apologize for the same thing six times in a row. Like you should also point out how you will not let that happen again some people don't go that far um and you pointed out men have a hard time typically apologizing in a genuine form like there's a difference between saying the words and saying the words and meaning the words and you can yeah. immediately tell when someone's saying it and someone's saying it and meaning it you know right and i will i will say that um before i did you know some necessary work on myself when I was younger and, um, I know someone was upset by my behavior, but I was kind of petty and spiteful. I would say things like, I'm sorry, you feel that way. Yes. Or like, I'm sorry that you're hurt. And, like and we all can't see right through that, or it doesn't make people more angry. Yeah. You know? And so I knew, good. I knew that person wanted an apology from me. And, um, so I gave a half ass the words but not yeah. in the way that they were intending you to do. And that's another, that, that all comes back to like, you shouldn't apologize unless you genuinely mean it because anything that you say or do is going to read fake. And people are, people are smart. Like my kids know when they're apologizing to each other that someone is like beating around the bush. Like, I'm yeah. sorry you felt like I took your, your doll from you meanly. I'm like, Right. That I, is not an apology. When, you my, know? Why when, my kids, when my kids used to fight and I would make them apologize to each other <laughs> and they would say they weren't sorry at all. And they would say things like, I'm sorry you touched me and I had to punch you. That's the thing. <laughs> we all know from day one that it's just a waste of time to apologize when you don't genuinely mean it. And that right. sometimes can mean just the person is still angry and they need a minute to reflect and have some space and realize. Oh, oh yeah. Like maybe there's so much in their own head at the moment, especially kids and teenagers that like, they don't really realize that they did something wrong quite yet, you know? Right. And my, my partner is short tempered. That's his nature. It's something he struggles with. And I know a lot of times he's not proud of his reactions to certain situations, Mm -hmm. but, um, when I've screwed up and done major mistakes in the past and he's, you know, flown off the handle in response, later on when we were all calm, we have a conversation about, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I sincerely messed up and I know that, and here I'm, I'm working, as you can see, I'm working on fixing it, but, um, that doesn't make that your, you know, response acceptable either. So he, and, and when you say these things, even out of anger, this is how it makes me feel. So we've worked through that. So now he, even though he's right in the big picture, he can apologize for the reaction. Yeah. Because so, sometimes the other person feels validated in how they react because they because are you, in the right. You were wrong. Like, yeah. Mm, still, I'm a person who has feelings and you overstepped, you know, or right. the things, <laughs> things people say can really like cause resentment if you don't apologize. Like, and if you don't apologize, right, then they'll feel like, well, did that person mean it? And then they never go back to fix it. There's some open wounds that never really fully heal. So, right. The whole point is like, you should only, you should definitely, we're not talking about never apologizing. We're talking about saying it out of habit because, you know, (laughs) you just, 
like when I would say I would rub my eyes out of nervous, nervous and nervous tick. I mean, are we saying I'm sorry out of a right. nervous tick? And are we um, taking away the meaning and the importance of those words when we say it too often, you know, because my That's daughter, what- my nine-year-old says it all the time. And I'm like, when are you really, really sorry? <laughs> you know, because like that's exactly like tick. Yeah, that's exactly what what I was bringing this up is that um, for me there are certain words that have a lot of meaning behind them and they're really uh, important words and they're kind of like sacred words. You know, like I don't say I don't use the term loving for every single. I don't. Oh my god, I love that. Oh my god, I try not to do that because I want I, when someone I say I love you to someone that that is like super I strong words it's my favorite a lot and my husband points it out he's like everything's your favorite I'm like well yeah <laughs> like okay maybe it's not my favorite but I really like it if you do it a lot it it, it you, you don't really certain words should be used with intention behind right it. so if you're you one know? of those people who says I'm sorry um every conversation uh, for little things then when you really do need to apologize it might not have the impact that you're hoping for yeah. Even the smallest bit of criticism will, will, and I only use my daughter as an example because I've noticed it a lot recently when I'll, I'll mention something or like sh- I'll come out of the room and she'll be walking and she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like for walking. Like it's okay. <laughs> you know? And it's like, almost like she's saying it out of a nervous, like it's a reflex. habit, but I don't want her to go into the world constantly apologizing. There's, there's gotta be a better word that she needs. Like excuse me, or, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's situational, but I noticed that she uses it a lot and I just curious where it comes from. Cause I genuinely don't feel like I I am that person that does it, but I could be, and I'm just not in tune with it. It's never been pointed out to me though. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the reasons why we might be over apologizing. Mm -hmm. So some people over apologize and you can usually tell this with the person where it's a confidence issue. It's almost like a self-esteem issue. And, um, that again, I see more with girls and women, but I'm not trying to stereotype, but you do, I think, um, the, oh, oh, I'm sorry for this. I'm, I'm sorry when you're walking in a hallway and you're, you know, taking in the way of someone or, it's like a, it's like an apologizing for taking up space, which is every person's human right. Right. Which is your human right. Yeah. It's just, you say it out of, or like you're walking out of a Starbucks with someone walking in. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, mm, there's just a, there's a better word for it. You know, there's a better word for it. Yeah. Excuse me would be fine. Or, you know, pardon me. Um, let me hold the door for you. I don't, I don't don't know. know something, but I'm sorry is not the time for that moment for example. Yeah. And I know, um, with some people, if they, if they were in a toxic relationship in the past, or they had, you know, an unhealthy dynamic in their, in their childhood, perhaps maybe, um, they were made to feel at some point in their life, small or less worthy of things than other people that might lead. I could see how that would lead to an over apologizing problem, but I think there are, uh, There's another aspect of this, and I've seen it in a few of my girlfriends, I won't name names, where um, they over apologize because they're like fishing for a compliment. I don't know if they do it subconsciously or not, but they say things like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm always such a scatterbrain or I'm so sorry. I'm so disorganized. And, And you know, and then there's a pause and you know, they're waiting for you to say, what are you talking about? You have everything together perfectly. Like, gross yeah it's <laughs> That's gross all I think about when I hear that I'm like it's I don't gross. personally know anyone that does that like or they, they look or apologize it's like well yeah you are like clearly <laughs> like you know my friend does it all like sometimes but it's genuinely because we're but here, have you ever have you ever walked into someone's house that is immaculate and they say I'm sorry for the mess Oh, no, I would hate them for that. And no, you're like, I have people say that, but you look around and you're like, mm-hmm, because they have young, I hang out with moms with young kids, no one's house. That, yeah. Which the crowd that I, which is a small circle, the circle I hang out with does not have an immaculate house and what we won't for a while. But if they are ever like that, oh, but I, my mom would be like that. My mom would spend like an, like 30 minutes cleaning and then he immediately apologized for the place being a mess. And I, my brother and I'd be looking at each other like, well, you didn't have a problem putting us to work for the last 30 <laughs> minutes for free, trying to get this place. Like she would vacuum. Yeah. It's because like, maybe she needed people to tell her how amazing her place was. I'm yeah. not a thousand percent sure, but I do I, remember I, her, it never being good enough. <laughs> like, 
And I don't think it, I don't think it's malicious necessarily. No. I think it's just, you know, maybe based on an insecurity or something and, and the validation is what they're looking for. But I have the same, yeah. I, I know some of the same people who will, who will say every time I see them, oh, I'm sorry. I, I look so grubby. I just came from yoga. And they, I mean, full makeup and hair. and like, what are you talking about? But I feel like maybe they're also saying that to their part, like they're used to saying that to their part, like they're never, they don't feel like maybe whatever is being presented in front of them is good as is. And they always yeah. need to apologize for what's in front of them. You know, like they could be in a the beautiful ball gown having dinner on the table and their husband will come home and she'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry. The place, like I look like a mess. And it's like, you do that to other people because you look to fish for compliments from your partner, but that's just yeah it might just, I just be think it's kind crazy of lack, <laughs> you know? they're not getting validation maybe somewhere like yeah had, so, and so they add a habit they they search for validation somewhere else. like you know like if you're not getting validation for the same reasons when we talked about like that having um an emotional affair like sometimes if you're not getting validation in your own relationship you seek outward so maybe if you're not getting validated in your relationship by like what's around them maybe you just need to seek felt you need someone to tell you your house is amazing you know right. or like your dress is awesome or like you're super organized whatever you need someone to do it because like you're aware of it but it doesn't matter until someone else says it right yeah exactly so that's a that's a habit that would annoy the you know what out of me I don't think I could be friends with people like that yeah I, it's, it's not endearing for sure because it's so disingenuous. <laughs> like we all, that's the thing is that we all, I come back to it. We all see through this stuff. We all see through when someone's fishing for a compliment or, you know, we all see through when someone's not genuinely apologizing. Um, so just be, gen be genuine. And, but if you're doing it, if, because you maybe, maybe when you were a kid, you apologized a lot, you know, maybe you had to always apologize for things as a kid. So out of a habit, you do it, you know, I don't know, but yeah. yeah, I don't know either, but there's a lot of reasons why over apologizing can affect your life and can, you know, affect how people see you. So, I mean, I think when you apologize as almost, you use it almost like a catchphrase and it, it comes out all the time. Um, I think it does have people see you as less confident mm -hmm. and maybe even less capable mm -hmm. because if you're constantly apologizing for things that aren't your fault, have nothing to do with you. You know, literally it's just whatever it is, you're taking up space that you are entitled to. Um, I think people might think that they can place blame on you for things that are not your fault, that you are just less of a confident person, less professional. There's a lot of ways that uh, I think we teach people how to treat us. And when we're constantly apologizing, you know, preemptively or without there being anything to apologize for, it kind of gives the other people permission to walk all over us. Unfortunately, I agree. I agree. No, I think it just, you don't feel like that person is fully capable of whatever is being presented in front of them. I mean, from a business standpoint, if you're always apologizing or being known for that, then you're not going to, you need that assertiveness, you know, and it doesn't come across that way. Um, you seem easily affected one way or another by something if you're apologizing all the time. Yeah. I think especially in a professional environment, if, um, if you're at work and I mean, your emails are when someone asks you, Hey, am I going to get that report today? And you respond, I'm so sorry. I'm working on it right now. Um, you know, it's, it's not late. You haven't passed a deadline, but you're giving the impression that you're disorganized or you're, um, late on your assignments or, you know, just, it's just less capable is what you would come across. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I would be very careful with, if that's a habit that you have, I would be very careful, especially in how it's affecting your work life and your career, yes. because you want to come across as capable and assertive and professional in your, in your career. That's yeah. no one ever wants to like handle someone with super care, like walk on eggshells and worry that, you know, oh, they're like, you know, cause when you hear the words, I'm sorry, it does alert the other person that's hearing it going like, did did they do some, like, if, if it's not in the right environment, you go, you, your brain almost reviews like the last 30 right. seconds of life and go like, why are they apologizing? You know, like you, without even thinking about it. And so if you're always having to feel that way, it's like, you're not going to give that person as much like work responsibility as you might want, you know, if you were more assertive and more confident and, and showed more confidence. So.
Okay. That, but yeah, that totally makes sense to me. I think uh, also, you know, if you have a friend or, you know, someone who's just constantly like they walk into the room and, and immediately apologize for just existing, it can get annoying. It's, it does, the, <laughs> it's, it's something yeah. that it's almost like a nervous tick, like you said, and, and you definitely want to get a handle on that because you, you don't want to be one of those people that, you know, is, is starting off every interaction kind of negatively. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would, it doesn't add anything to the interaction for sure. Um, and it, we already talked about how it takes power away from the word. I'm sorry, that's a powerful word and we wanna leave it as a powerful word. So it shouldn't be, it. if you accidentally interrupt someone when they're talking, little things like that, I mean, you could still apologize for it because yeah, that it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of rude behavior, but if it's, if you happens constantly, you may want to evaluate if you're doing things. <laughs> Find you... a way to stop the behavior, not apologize for the behavior. Yeah. You know, and it's hard to do. I mean, like and breaking any bad habit that you're not fully, like fully in, not in charge of, but breaking any bad habit that you're not fully aware of when you're doing it is hard to do. Yeah. Well, um, and also, I mean, if you, if you do have bad habits, like talking over people, interrupting, um, running late, things like that, the more you apologize for it over and over again, without changing any of your behavior, you're mm -hmm. all you're doing is calling attention to that negative trait and you're not fixing it. Like if you, every time you meet your girlfriends for lunch, you're late 10, 15 minutes, every single time. And every single time you apologize, but you're going to be not late next time as well. Your behavior, yeah. Then you, it just what's the point. You might as well stop apologizing. Yeah, even yeah. if it's the most genuine apology in the whole world, it's like, thanks, cool. Yeah. You know, like, what do you, like, what What can you, it just, it doesn't excuse the behavior. That's not what it's for. Right. Know? It's almost like, it does nothing excuses the behavior, but it almost kind of helps in a way. But if you're abusing it, then it, then it really doesn't help. Right. If you have negative behaviors, like you have a bad hair trigger temper, or you say things that you don't mean, you say things that you shouldn't. Um, I'm not talking about little things like being running late or talking over people while those things are, you know, disrespectful of other people. Um, I'm talking about things so that you are genuinely bad behaviors and your routine has just been to continue to do them and apologize. And so when the person brings it up later and says, Hey, you know, this keeps happening. And you say, but I said, I was sorry. Yeah. But if you say you're sorry, every single time it's manipulative because you're not sorry. You're just yeah. trying to get the person to move on and not talk about it. It's using the word to your advantage at that point, not actually thinking of the person and their feelings. You know, the apology is not in the right place and people see through that. Yeah. A false apology. It's almost like a form of gaslighting because you, you later on, you can point back to the apology as like a get out of jail free card, but you, if you, the behavior continues indefinitely, then, then you're not sorry. Cause people yeah. who are sorry change their behavior. Yeah. First of all, understand what the word I'm words. I'm sorry actually mean, or I apologize, <laughs> like do a little research, figure it out and then be selective on when you use them. Um, I, you know, I've heard people like put little like rubber bands on their, um, wrist to like, if they know they're about to do something that it is an, is a bad habit that they're trying to be more aware of, they'll like snap snap themselves right. out of it. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to change behaviors when they are so deeply ingrained in you and you've been doing it for so long and they're so not what you feel like is in your control. Like you're aware of it after you've done it and the dance is like already out there. Um, it's not with enough, I'm sorry, but I have behaviors in my own relationship that are like, that really annoy my partner. And they really don't come out until I'm like in what I call caveman mode where you're really not thinking with like your logical yeah. brain. You're just going into like, hey, rah, you know, and that's, that's when those things come out. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to be, be in control when I'm least in control? And some people do these when they're like, when, you know, because being in a, in a room with people or passing someone gives them anxiety. So that's their thing that they do, you know, or like whatever it is, it's hard to be in control when something feels super out of control. So, um, you know, when, when you do realize this is a habit you do, if you're listening to this and you're going, oh yeah, I do say it a lot, but not for the reasons that I should be saying it, right. Um, you know, what's the next step about how to go about fixing that, you know, so that it's not continually happening, you know? Cause we all want a genuine, I feel like we all want, when we use the word, we, 
most of the time we all want that person to feel like we meant it, you know, but if you're saying it too much to the, all, to the same people all the time, yeah. you know, or you're using it like a get out of jail free card, like you said, well, then how do you bring the meaning back when you've used it too much, you know, and how do you stop this behavior? Yeah, I think, um, I think probably the most common misuse of I'm sorry is, is when people use it reflex, reflective, what, I cannot not think of that word <laughs> as a reflex. <laughs> As a, oh, as a re yeah yeah where it's like a knee-jerk reaction and they yeah. say i'm sorry all the time um when what they really mean is something else so let's talk if that is the issue then that's an easier solved issue than saying sorry uh just to have the person move on and you're not sorry if that's what's happening you need to work on your behavior we mm -hmm. we all agree mm -hmm. if you just keep apologizing for the same rude thing that you're doing and you have no no plans to change your behavior then you are not actually sorry and you shouldn't be apologizing um but what we're talking about i think what we should talk about and what is probably the more common problem is people who say like you were talking about your daughter just say i'm sorry when they don't mean that word mm -hmm. so what are the things that we can say instead and i've heard i've seen this from my daughter who really hates confrontation mm -hmm. so if she gets served the wrong order at a restaurant she will first of all she probably wouldn't say anything to be honest <laughs> but if she did say something she would probably call the waiter over and say i'm so sorry but this isn't what i ordered now in my mind there's no reason to have an apology at the beginning of that statement i feel i like if if i was in the same scenario i would say the same thing i would start off with like i'm so sorry but, but what are right. you sorry for well, why maybe because <laughs> like i i feel like it's a perfectly good platter of food for someone else it just wasn't <laughs> what i ordered and it's like how dare i be so selective but also <laughs> i i but chose to come into this restaurant and, and pay money food yeah that i wanted a certain thing and this is clearly not it so yeah why am i sorry but i do that too yeah I we, like a lot of people do that so what i think would you say a lot of people when they're calling someone out on a mis else on a mistake they mm -hmm. start by apologizing first and i don't know yes. if it's meant to like soften the blow or what yes. it is but i think that you know excuse me in that scenario would work just as well if you, i mean i don't want to be like don't say it like very karenish like excuse me but like, like <laughs> yeah but in the same way you'd be I, like i'm so sorry you'd be like excuse me yes. you know like they didn't make the food they, they're right doing their job like and a lot of times when i've been served the wrong food or it was cooked improperly according to what i ordered the waiter had absolutely no idea. Like he put it in pro properly and it just didn't come out of the kitchen that way. Yeah. So it's probably not their fault either. It's just one of those things that happens and um, you don't need to apologize to them for them <laughs> bringing you the wrong food. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I do that too. That's an eye opener. Maybe I do say I'm sorry a lot in like the most unnecessary of times, but yeah, I feel like my brain just goes to that because I'm like, they're off going, getting sugar for table 16. And now I have to make them come back after they just gave me my food. Like, I feel like somewhere I'm doing something wrong, but probably not. Like I'm really searching at that point. Yeah. I mean, I think when we apologize to people for expecting them to do the job that they're doing and the job that we're paying them for in some yes. aspect yes. is, is probably inappropriate time to apologize. But, um, you can say, excuse me, you can say, you know, you, if it, if you really have that problem with confrontation, you can start with a compliment and be like, oh, our service has been so good, but I just wanted to let you know that this wasn't right. Or, you know, this, because if you, I think in any time you're you start with a nice thing, yeah. whatever you say after is going to be less of a blow in your head and theirs. If that's something you're worried about. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's the same with, when you apologize for just taking up space. Um, I don't think anybody should have to apologize for taking up space. I don't know where that started or where it comes from. I feel but like it, it, got, it got more alert and aware with the pandemic and people now coming out in public. And yeah, there are some people that are very good at knowing what six feet is. And there are some people that are not. And then there are some people that six feet is just never going to be enough for them. And so when you meet all different types of, of people, when you get in, in an environment where there is 
all types of people. You don't know which that type that person is. You're just like, if you get what you feel like might be too close, you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I noticed that I've been doing that a lot more after the pandemic. And I'm like waiting in line for food at Starbucks or something like that. And we're all waiting in the area where you wait to get your food. Mm -hmm. Um, not like I'm sorry that I'm taking space, but I'm just like, man, this is a weird time. And I don't know if this is comfortable space for you, you know? So that's, that's my personal experience with that. Um, no need to apologize though, I guess, unless I'm like right on them. I mean, even <laughs> then I have to be shoved like cattle or something like for that to happen. And is that still my fault? Probably not. So yeah, it's not really a need, but I, it makes me feel more okay with people being whatever I'm doing, you know, like, yeah. you know, if I'm yeah. too close, I'm sorry, but that's also me saying like, this is what I'm choosing to do. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. think in a, in a, in a business context, how we talked about it, you know, it can really make you look less capable and unprofessional. If you apologize really routinely, either in your emails or in correspondence in business, so I think that one we can easily replace with um, a thank you, thanking the person. Yeah. So, you know, if you have to put someone on hold or you're a few minutes later to get into a Zoom or a meeting, um, you don't, I mean, it, you don't need to necessarily apologize for that, but you can thank them for their patience. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's the same with the email example that we used saying, will I have that report by the end of the day? You can say, I'm working on it right now. Thank you for your patience. And yeah, I've noticed when somebody says in an, in a store or something, I'm so sorry for the wait versus thank you for your patience. When I have to be like, it's okay. Even though maybe I don't mean it. Like, I feel like I'm now responsible for their feelings. Subconsciously. That's the whole thing. When the, you know? when it's, when it's an apology based uh, comment or conversation, it's rooted in blame or guilt. And you, and you then reflexively feel like you need to appease the person and, yeah. and say, it's fine. Your, um, you, your brain goes, did I look like I was impatient? Did I look like I was pissed off? Like, even if I didn't, you're like, oh, it's okay. But it's like it's the whole exchange weird, is, it starts it off. Thing. Yeah. It's a weird dynamic, but when you thank the person, it, it comes to gratitude, a place of yes. gratitude. It's very a very true. different mindset. It's so a professional mindset. And I think a confident mindset, something that yes. you should do instead. That's so, good. I mean, if you are running late to a meeting, you can say, thank you all for waiting. Um, you can say, thank you for your patience. You, I mean, anything like that. Um, and if you feel like you're taking someone's time or taking up space, you, you can also thank them for their time instead of saying, I'm so sorry. I know you're very busy, but can you do this or that? You can say, I always appreciate the time you spent with me. Thank you for your time. Um, if you could also blah, 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 that, that is also appreciated. Something like that. I think it doesn't need to have an, I'm sorry in it, especially an I'm sorry with an exclamation point, which I am really bad about doing. <laughs> I always do that. I always send emails. But I I'm say I'm sorry to every email because I'm always sorry. Like it is my <laughs> fault. I don't, you know, I'm not, not genuinely apologizing. I'm just like, oh shoot, I'm sorry. Cause like, I, I do say it without being aware, like when I'm in sharing space, but I also say it when I'm genuinely sorry, but it's like, how would the normal person everyday person know, know the difference. And am I saying it so much that I'm taking away the importance of it when I really mean it? Um, even if I'm not saying it consecutively to the same person, you know, and may, maybe that person I said, I'm sorry to at Starbucks, I'm never going to say I'm sorry to again, but it's just like, that's the, that's the Megan I'm putting out into the world. And that's important too. And I don't need to apologize for every move I make. I have a right to be there as much as they do, you know? Yeah. So just be aware when you're saying it, which is hard to do. We're not really aware what we say sometimes or how we say things. Sometimes we're so wrapped up in our own head. We're not even listening to ourselves, Yeah. Um, but maybe make it like an experiment and, and listen to yourself. And like, when you're saying words, kind of say it back in your head as you're saying it and hear yourself talk. And yeah, it can, no, it's, that's you know. very true because like when my older daughter, um, first started really using a cell phone and texting me and stuff uh, when she was a teenager, uh, she would be really abrupt in what she was saying. And it, to me, it sounded like a huge amount of attitude. And, and, and so I, I just asked her, you know what, before you hit send, read your text message aloud to yourself, because mm -hmm. I don't think you realize how it comes across. And yeah. once she started doing that, she was like, mom, I had no, I sound so snotty and I don't mean that, <laughs> but it, it was just the way she was typing. Um, 
the way she was typing out her responses just sounded like not very polite and she had no idea because you can't pick up someone's tone from an email or a text message. No, you can't. And that yeah. just leaves it open to 15 possible tones and mm -hmm. um, none of them you meant. That's so funny that you bring that up. And it, when you're more aware of those things, you, you're you more aware to fix the things. Like I remember this is off subject, but on the subject, you and I were having lunch years ago um, when we were doing real estate stuff. And you were like, you said something about like, I hate when people abbreviate words then I have to go and play like investigator. It's like, how hard is it to just write great when you put like a GR and an eight? Like, I hate when people do that. And it made me realize and reflect how much I do that and abbreviate text messages. And I'm just like, I'm going to be more aware and like write things out. So I sound more intelligent and I don't have to like make a code for everyone. But when you're aware of certain behaviors that are just become, you know, so you're so unaware of it, you know, and then yeah. you just like kind of tune it into yourself, talk to yourself, read things that you're writing to yourself, then your then your your narration is much more loud and you become aware of how you're putting yourself out there into the world. And you're like, I use the word like a lot, you know, or <laughs> yeah, I, it's like this nervous habit, or I use the word I'm sorry, the words I'm sorry a lot. Um, you won't know until either someone is bold enough to point it out to you or until you listen to yourself talk, right? Yeah, I, I know I use the word cute way too much. So really? I'm working on that. I always say, oh my God, that's so cute. This is so cute. I, I And I don't even, it's not even like cute is not even the right word that I'm looking for. It's just the word that I've adopted it's into my vocabulary for anything for. pleasing to the eye is cute, which it's not <laughs> like puppies are cute, babies are cute. Like, no, <laughs> but- um, I think, you know, one of the things we could exchange for I'm sorry is to ask the question that you're really wanting to ask, which sometimes I do this, I'll call someone. And because I'm usually a texter or an emailer, when I actually call someone, I usually start by saying, I'm so sorry, are you busy? Can you talk? Um, instead of saying something as simple as is it a good time for you right now? Um, because I, I when my phone rings, and I'm in the middle of something, I'm always like, Oh, why don't they just text me what they need? So I'm sensitive to that. And I, I do preemptively apologize in those situations. Or if I stop by um, some kind of business where I don't have an appointment and I just want to ask them a quick question, I always say, I'm so sorry to bother you. But instead of saying, you know, are you free for a moment? I have a question. If you just turn it from I'm sorry into the question that you really want to ask, I think not only is it more clear, but um, it doesn't make the person responsible for your feelings, like you said, by having to tell you, oh, no, it's no trouble. What do you need? Yeah. If you it's say it's a lot of B, I'm sorry, I'm going to call it. It's a lot of BS. We don't need that's that's seven to eight seconds of exchanging that I don't need like streamline. I, I'm so yeah. sorry to bother you. It's OK. Uh, what was that for? I'm really not sorry. And you really don't need to be okay with it. Like, it's just, it's such a well, waste of time. <laughs> here's you know? the thing, because I don't like usually getting phone calls. So if somebody calls me and they start off with, I'm so sorry. I know you don't like to talk on the phone, but it, you know, I have a quick question or whatever. Then I feel obligated because they've apologized to me. Now, if I say, you know what, actually I'm busy, then I'm rude. Right. So, but if they start the conversation out by saying, is it a good time? I just have a quick question. If it's not a good time, now I'm free to say, actually, you know what? I'm, I've got my hands in bread dough. Can I call you back in five minutes? <laughs> Whatever it is, right? Um, you also are giving that permit person permission to freely answer your question instead of Here's putting thing, emotional. My husband would point out when I would call, be like, I'm sorry, is this a bad time? He'd be like, if it was a bad time, I wouldn't have picked up the phone. Most of the True. time, if someone's going to pick up the phone, unless it's like my kids or my kid's school or my dad, who's kind of older, like if it's not a good time, I won't pick up the phone. I may call you back in like 45 seconds to a minute when, like you said, my hands aren't in bread dough or whatever it is. Yeah. But if I picked up the phone, I've already made the decision to talk to you. So you mm -hmm. apologizing and asking if it's a good time. I'm just like freaking clearly because I picked up the phone, you know, like even if I was busy, it just makes the people feel like you said responsible to like make it okay for this conversation to happen. And it's like, it's clearly okay. I picked up the call, you know, or I, there's a button that you can hit when someone's calling that's ignore and there's custom messages. This is right. Can I call you later? You know, when you get it, it's a bad time. Like, yeah, usually I, I, I call people sometimes. And then I say, I'm so sorry. Are you driving? <laughs> well, like, <laughs> 
shouldn't be. Shouldn't um, be if you answer the or, or reputation of driving. Or, you know, maybe they're on Bluetooth and it doesn't matter. And they can say, oh, no, it's, you know, you could just ask. If they picked up, it's probably fine to talk. It's probably it's fine. Not fine. They'll be they're 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 a person. They will tell you, hey, I'm sorry, I'm dropping off so and so right now. Can I call you in two minutes? Because maybe they didn't want you to like be ignored, but they also know they can't talk right now. You right. Know? Don't start it with, I'm so sorry. I know you're busy. Even if the person's like literally the busiest person. I am insanely busy. Look, my life is insane. So yeah. if I, I up freaking be grateful you picked up and let's have this conversation. Don't yeah. waste my time. With Don't. Sorry. And then now <laughs> I have to respond and say, oh no, that's okay. I have a minute. What do you need? Like I said, seven to eight seconds of BS. Wasted we all time. don't need to deal with. Let's just get to right. what we need to get. Exactly. To. If have you know confidence. that. If you know that person is actually insanely busy, busy then why take up more? Kind of annoying. Taking up more of their time by get going through that whole exchange, <laughs> because you're insecure. Seriously. <laughs> or you some yeah, it's it is yeah, and it's fine, and we all do it at the weirdest times. It's fine. It's just we all just need to have more confidence in ourselves, and we all need to have more confidence in the space we take in and the time we take of people. Like, I'm sorry, the lady that goes, I just did it. I'm sorry. The lady that goes <laughs> to work at the dentist office knows that there's going to be walk-ins asking random questions. You don't need to apologize. She's already aware of what her job entails. You right. know, like, that's a part of her job. You don't need to be apologetic about it. No, you know, not if for you it. asked her to come and help you change your tire, that's not a part of her job. You can still <laughs> say, excuse me, this is going to sound weird. I'll buy you a Starbucks, but you don't have to start with, I'm sorry. No, I no. notice I say, just like I just did on this podcast, I say, I'm sorry when it's like a transition to another thought sometimes. Yeah. And it's like a nervous, it's just, it's a misusage of a word or a collection of words during a time that isn't needed. And right. Like, it's not harmful, but also when I say I'm sorry to someone like my daughter or someone like my husband, and they hear me say, I'm sorry in passing conversation, could there have been a moment where I could have used a different word, mm -hmm. you know, or set of words to mean the same thing, to get me into that next strain of thoughts without saying, I'm sorry, but you know, I say yeah. that a lot, a lot. I, I apologize. I think everybody does. I apologize for things that have absolutely nothing to do with me and are without, con I have no control over, don't have anything. Like if my husband's having a really bad day, I'll say, honey, I'm so sorry you're having a bad day. Um, or I'm so sorry you don't feel well or what I, I have. And the, he's like, did you do it? Like, <laughs> why are you apologizing? Or if I tell him, I'm so sorry, you, you know, you're feeling sick. I didn't, I didn't get him sick. Like, why am I apologizing? Like, I do it too. I think we all do that. Yeah. But it's like, what do we use in replacement of? You're like, I'm, but I can, I can switch that, that over yeah. the fact that this is happening to you. It's, it's a still, statement our brain of sympathy. is not as big of a thesaurus as we'd like it to be in those right. moments. And we just go to what's natural and what flows. And if it's a, if it's, I'm sorry, then you got to change that flow. Yeah. It's a statement of sympathy, but you could as easily, I could as easily say, honey, I know you're having a bad day. Is there anything that I can do to make it better? Or I know you're not feeling well, like, would you like some soup or is there anything I can do? Do you want a hot, you know, washcloth or something? I don't know. Like <laughs> there, it doesn't, we need to kind of back up from the over apologizing. Um, if it's like, something, for example, if someone didn't get that apology at work and they're venting to you, we feel like if we apologize for that action, it's going to make them feel better. But really that apology is not is not meant from you. It's meant from somebody else that's wronged them. It's not going right. to make them feel better. Right. So when someone consciously think it will make us and them in the situation feel better. Right. Know? When someone's explaining a bad situation that happened to them, um, we always want to say, I'm so sorry that happened to you instead of like, wow, that sucked. I'm angry on your behalf. Like, yeah. what are you going to do about Which it? Which is the same thing, by same, the way, same thing. you're meaning the same thing, but it's like, you do go into like, but you didn't do it why are you sorry <laughs> and then you go oh I don't know I just like I'm so sorry that happened and you're like again why are you sorry you're right I do that too because you know if a coworker wronged your spouse or like a friend they're in a fight or something and they're just venting to you your first reaction could be to apologize for that person or that situations on their behalf when you had nothing to do with it. Right. And now they're having to take your feelings into it and it's like so off subject and it's off topic. 
of what they wanted from that in exchange. Sometimes they just want to vent and you and have like a, a, a teammate. You can still be a teammate. You can still right. be like, go. Yeah. yeah. But you don't have to apologize. No, for it. you can still say like, I know exactly how that feels and it's awful. Like, you know, what can, what can we do to get your mind off it? Or yeah. is, you know, do you need, do you, do you want to tell me more about it? Like what will help you right now? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, probably a more um, effective question than just, you know, that blanket apology thing that everybody does. Cause immediately they'll either ask a question like, well, what are you sorry for? Or they'll have to subconscious or, you know, they'll have to say, it's okay. Don't yeah. want, like, you know, and then now it's about you and that you've made it about you too often. If you make it about, this could be making it about you. You could be saying it because subconsciously you want it to come back to you. And if that's truly why you're doing these type of things, well then yeah, self-reflection and figure out why am I needing so much validation and to always be about me. You know, yeah. I have a spouse and a partner who I may not like it at first, but I really appreciate how honest he is when I do something that like this, like a subconscious behavior like this, that we're talking about, where I always make it about me or something like that. Like he is not afraid to point those things out. Sometimes yeah. it's not always in the right moments. Like I'm heated and he points out a flaw and that, that that's like a childhood thing. I don't want him to be tuning into, but I, I am happy that he is comfortable enough with me to point out things that I'm doing because it's not always just him that I'm doing it to. I could be doing it to my brother, my dad, my best friend, my kids, you know, I don't want to just be doing it to everyone. And if it's something that's not a good trait, not like he's trying to fix me, but like I said, if you're apologizing for someone else's, like a situation that happened to them, you could be doing it because you want the focus to be back on you again. Yeah. You're redirecting the attention and, and that's not helpful. So, I mean, if any of my loved ones or friends and family is listening to this, if I come and vent to you about a bad day I'm having, or I'm not feeling good, or I, something, someone did something that really sucked to me, all I want you to say, you don't need to say, I'm sorry, if you didn't do it. All you need to say is, ugh, that's the worst. Do you want to go get tacos? And I will immediately be better. <laughs> if you, you don't just need to sometimes just let it out. You're not yeah. really expecting the person to fix it ever, unless that's their job or unless that's what, like, what you go to them for. But yeah, it's, 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 it's person to person too. Sometimes people want people to like hear their problems and like fix it for them or tell them what to do. You're not one of them. You just need people to hear, let you do your no, thing. No, I'm, I'm a, I'm a hyper capable person. Um, so <laughs> I don't need anybody to fix it for me, but I, I mean, if you want to get tacos, I, I, that always helps. Right. I yeah. know. Let me, let me feel comfortable enough to tell you what's going on, but don't feel like you need to like go fix it. You know? <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, so there's a, a probably a bunch of reasons why people are using the words I'm sorry out of out of out of like when you're reflex yeah it. yeah um could be could be like we said an attention thing could be a you know a nervous habit just be and just be aware and find you know yeah so know. I think I, I think we should give our listeners um some homework this week I think it would be great if everybody could just kind of pay a little bit closer attention over the next few days to see how often you kind of reflexive reflect. Why can't I say that word? <laughs> Reflexively, is that a word? I, I don't know. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth. Sometimes when words sound weird, they're not words, but you know what? That happens when I spell things and I look at it and I go, that's not right, but it right. is right. It and I'm is like, right, yeah. No. Reflect, what would be a word that means that, but isn't that? Because like, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right, but what else would it be? I don't know. Moving Whatever. <laughs> you know what it means when you're doing it subconsciously yeah. out of, out of nervous, it's a nervous tick. It's a reflex and, yeah. out of I, some sort of action after immediately out of an action without even being mentally like, that's what I meant. Control. Yes. So I want everyone to pay attention to how many times they apologize over the next few days when it's not, they don't sincerely mean that they are sorry or have regret. We're not talking about sitting and reflecting for 20 no. minutes and going back and talk. We mean when we're just talking. When we're just talking. And I want you to also pay attention to how the person you're speaking to reacts to that unnecessary apology. Um, whether you know it's a redirect of attention or it's a reassurance, a validation, whatever it is that you see how people react to it and also kind of absorb that. And if if over those few days that you notice that you're doing it more than you would have thought that you are, or it, it actually is a problem that maybe you didn't realize you had, 
uh, you know, spend a little time with that and figure out if there, if there's reasons, if it's just honestly just a reflex for you, it's a filler statement and, and that's, it's become that for you. Or if it's, you know, more deeply rooted in, in some kind of, you know, self-confidence issue or feeling to blame for things that are not your fault, you might want to just spend a little bit of time exploring that. Mm -hmm. So um, I, this is, again, always something that we can continue the conversation with over on our Facebook discussion group. If you go on Facebook and you look up She's a Full on Monet, our page has an attached discussion group. So we always love um, to see you guys uh, talking in there or commenting on the article about uh, this subject, just what your own experiences have been. And I'm sure there's a, a lot of our listeners out there who have great tips or other phrases you can use to kind of get yourself out of this habit. I would love to hear them. So please yes. either comment in the article or on our video or show notes or whatever, and, and share with us what works for you. If you used to be an over apologizer and you learn how to kick the habit, I would love to hear your advice. I agree. I think, I think a lot of it, it's working on that direct homework, but also working on I think the more, the more confident and, and cool with ourselves, we are the less apologetic for even the smallest things. Like yes. as I've aged and become in my thirties, I am what I am. And I am not apologetic about it really at all. Um, so, you know, if we start the day with like good affirmations, self, you know, good, like self uplifting talk, you know, working on working on ourselves and becoming more self-confident, I think that will also go away. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, thank you again for joining us. We appreciate it. Every... <laughs> she knew, she knew, she knew. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Um, <laughs> she's not going to stop now. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate that you guys are growing with us and coming back week after week. So I just want to thank everybody who joins us and um, and I, I hope, you know, you guys are getting something out of this. I am for sure. And I think, uh, hopefully we're adding value. So of course, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. Don't forget to bookmark our site. She's a full on Monet.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you're enjoying this podcast, it helps us a lot if you can follow, rate, and review. See y'all next week. Thank you.